Right, that's up over 100 marks, so let's get this broadcast underway. It's Andy Truck Davy, with the track, truck, and at home in his office in Salisbury, North Lancashire. But it's not a bad morning at this point in time, five degrees dry at the moment. Right, so this is the news review for the 30th of the 1st, 2023. Monday started with a mixed bag in the rags, um, a daily record, and the two right wing loony rags go on suspension of moving trans prisoners to women's facilities. The right wing loony rag, um, the fail says, shamed sturgeon in the new U term over trans prisoners. Never heard so much crap in all your life. Oofed. Anyway, the Justice Secretary has ordered a review of the SPS transgender policy. The SPS um, uses individual risk assessments to risk um, the danger of trans people um, to others and the gender that they are claiming to be. Now, that's in line with UK equalities law and similar, um, similar processes are in place in England and Wales, so nothing to see here. Move along. Right, the Times, the Nationals and the others eh, go on. Hey, eh, their fallout from Sunak sacking Salawi. And the headlines, eh, they go for uh, what took so long Sunak to sack him. And to Sunak's allies blame Johnson for Tory sleaze after PM sacked Salawi. Now that one cracked me up, folks. So there's a Davies's. Davies's Sunak's allies Blame Tory Sleaze on Johnson. Wow. Sunak was the Chancellor that oversaw England's £37 billion track and trace wheeze. Sunak wrote off £4 billion in dodgy bounce back loans. Sunak oversaw um, the crooked PPE scandal and the VIP away, writing off £9 billion worth of crap PPE. By the way, there's a PS for that. That £9 million pounds worth of crap PPE is costing the UK taxpayer £700,000 a day to store as it's being disposed of. Um, soon I was a Chancellor when Lord Agnews quit as the anti-corruption advisor, saying the Cabinet and Number 11 had made no attempts to stop corruption and there was no due diligence in almost anything that was done during the pandemic. Sunak was also Chancellor when Zawawi was being investigated by HMRC. I'm sure Sunak would have been briefed on it. Sunak's current Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, wrote Company House Rules restructuring a company that he co-founded to save £100,000 a year and personal tax to Jeremy Hunt. I'm sure HMRC had something to say about that at the time in 2018. Um, so, Sunak's been right at the heart of the Boris Johnson administration. He's been fined twice one for party gate and one for no wearing his seat belt. Wow. Sunak supporters claim that the sleaze was Bojo's fault. No, Sunak was right there, right next to Bojo, almost every step of the way. Thanks, John, the van driving legend, still a driving god. It all helps, John. Thanks. Thanks for super chill. All right. The Herald, the Herald that runs on a, um, a healthcare story. The Herald says GPs and GP surgeries in the greater Glasgow and Clyde Healthport area are closing the list to new patients due to heavy workloads. I didn't have time to look at one yet, but I'm not going to look into that one because that doesn't sound, that just doesn't sound right. Um, so, we've got a real weekend into that one. All right. 
Right, moving on. Monday started in Scotland on a couple of business stories. Lee's confessionary, confessionary group sold for 5.7 million to Welsh A. Finsbury Food Group. And Scottish gold mining company Scottish Gold Resources are ramping up production to 57 kilograms a month, worth, worth roughly 3 million quid. They also intend to open up new miners, uh, new mines nearby the original mine at the moment, right? So, their money for the Westminster coffers, maybe the local community will uh, um, benefit um, the people working in the mine. Maybe get something into the local community. But I care ching for Westminster again. Eh? Right, okay, moving on Monday, and it's announced the Westminster Equalities Committee to hear legal advice on the Scottish or Scotland's GRR bill. They will hear from two top advocates, one who believes eh, the bill does not affect UK wide eh, equality laws and doesn't think the Section 35 order should stand. And uh, the, the other thinks that it does breach a uh, UK equalities law and uh, the Equalities Committee will take evidence for both the them plus two top lawyers, barristers working in the field of equalities. All right, so that should be interesting. Hey, uh, Jen Daly, thank you very much. Uh, for that donation. Right, moving on. Uh, here in Scotland on Monday, the rolling teacher strike goes on. Monday sees disruption to classrooms in Aberdeenshire and the borders. Strikes are set to escalate in February with all out strike days. At the moment, it's rolling across the 32 councils, so you only have one day, uh, two council areas half a day. But um, the EIS are talking about all outside days in February, so that's to be escalated. Right, speaking of which, Monday in the House of Thieves and Carpetbaggers won the pub week of major disruption on Wednesday in England and Wales as a hundred thousand pub week sector workers go on strike. Later on Monday, we may as well cover it while we're talking about strikes. Later that day in the House of Thieves and Carpetbaggers, the Tories passed the Minimum Service Bill by 315 votes to 246 votes. Right, it will now advance to the Lords for scrutiny before it passes into law. Why do we say um, advance, advances now to the Lords for scrutiny? Because whatever amendments they lay, if they lay any, will just be bounced for the Tories back in the House and eh, the Commons Chamber. So this minimum service bill is coming into law, folks, and that's the biggest whack to human rights the UK has seen ever. It's not just human rights that are being undermined here, it's also democratic rights. The human right and the democratic right to um, a collective bargaining and to withdraw your labour, these are basic rights. And they're about to be taken from six major sectors here in the UK. And by the time the EU reform a, a, a retained um, a law bill goes through and ministers get the power to rip up whatever they want, because remember, it's ministers know the Commons will do that, then you can see the labour markets in the UK being deregulated. And we have watched that get on for the last few years. Eddie, thanks very much. And hey, we've paid thanks very much um, for those donations to the, the charitable fund. Thank you. So, workers' rights are out the windy. Strike action is an effective way of a negotiating and collective bargaining is off the table. Just a matter how long the Lords can hold this thing up in the Lords before it hits the statute books. Nurses, teachers, people in the transport sector, border guards, fire and rescue, 
they could all face the strike if they don't go to work when ordered to go to work by the sectors they work in. And the sectors themselves, the ministers of all those sectors, will set what the minimum a, um, service um, availability will be. So you could see that 75% to 80% of workers have to go to work, making the strikes ineffective. Um, take the legislation which allowed poverty. Um, a, a, thank you very much, Ali. Um, that's very generous. Um, a, the, the bill that was passed um, recently to allow employers to bring in agency workers to fill the voids when employees go on strike. In this gig economy and a declining economy, strike is not going to be an effective way of a protest or public bargaining anymore. The only thing that could be done is that we can show this law is no workable by ignoring it. Can he sack on the nurses, the fire brigade firemen? You can't replace them. Right, moving on Monday. And doing that road, um, William Shawcross, the Commissioner for a Public Appointments, steps away to the inquiry into um, Richard Sharp's appointment as the BBC Director General, uh, BBC Chair, after arranging an £800,000 loan for Bodo the Cloud. Now, why is Mr. Shawcross, the Public's um, the Appointments Commissioner, stepping away from this case? Well, Mr. Shawcross was a Public's Appointment Commissioner who appointed Richard Shawcross. Uh, Richard A. Uh, um, Shaw, the director, uh, or, or sorry, um, chairman of the BBC, or director general, whatever the title is. Anyway, uh, Mr. Shawcross, William Shawcross, the um, a Commissioner for Public Appointments, says the reason he's stepping back for inquiry is previous dealings with Mr. <laughs> Mr. Richard Shaw. Uh, Mr. Sh Sharp, sorry, Mr. Uh, Richard Sharp, who was appointed director general by this guy. He couldn't make it up, a plot thickens. So the guy who was appointed to do the inquiry into the BBC, a uh, new director, a uh, new chairperson being, a, being put into position, is the guy that put him into position. Oof, he couldn't make that up. Right, what other nonsense did we hear yesterday? Why, Bojo the Clown says Putin threatened a missile strike on, one would assume, the UK or London, <coughs> on the run-up to the start of the Ukraine war, which is coming towards um, its first full year anniversary, unfortunately. Anyway, the Kremlin says Bojo the Clown is talking crap. Right, moving on Monday, a US Army General says UK no longer has a viable defence or fighting force. Um, and a stark warning to Defence Secretary Ben Wallace, the USMA says um, a, the UK has no got a viable force that they they put into action. And if they did get into action, they'd run out of ammunition within a few days. The UK lacks the ability to defend its uh, skies against missile and drone strikes on the level that we're seeing in the Ukraine, apparently. And it would take five to ten years for the UK to be able to build a viable and um, fighting division of 25 to 30,000 troops. Backed up with helicopters and tanks, apparently, we just don't have the stuff. Right. Um, now, the US also tell Ben Wallace the majority of the UK Army's fleet of vehicles, including tanks, were built between 30 and 60 years ago, and they are no duty to be replaced for years to come. 
Wow. So the equipment that our army is working with to do was built 30, 60 years ago. You couldn't make it up. Thank you, Fiona. That's very nice of you. Thank you. Right, anyway, apparently the UK um, defence spending needs to increase by three billion a year and uh, massive recruitment driving needed apparently with army personnel at only 72,000 full-time um, soldiers. And that A, eh, that's due to be cut again apparently. Right, and apparently half the UK battle ready forces are A, eh, reservists. And couldn't be mobile um, a, at, at the times uh, required by NATO. So the UK is worrying the NATO block. So much for bigger, stronger, better together. Eh? There was also a report out in the UK Defence Journal by some wacky professor saying that Scotland's a, um, a shipbuilding wouldn't be viable if Scotland became independent because Scotland shipbuilding is geared up for heavy warship building and they, they, they Scotland apparently wouldn't they need heavy warships. That would they, apparently we would have a sort of defence force that Norway but uh, that a um, Southern Ireland has which is just a coastal shore for a, a coastal fleet of a uh, small boats to protect the shore. What a lot of crap, of course. The Scotland will need to take a full part in protecting the North West Passage. So we will definitely need um, warships. Definitely. Aye, thanks to um, uh, John and Jen for the name, David. Aye. Okay, moving on. Monday, and the International Monetary Fund uh, revises down the UK's um, economic outlook. This is in all the papers this morning, folks, but this is supposed to be the last night. Okay. Now, I, I, I had originally said that there would be 0 to 0.1% 0 growth in the UK economy. That was the IMF and the OECD's um, uh, predictions. Now they're predicting a contraction of 0.6%. And that uh, a 2024 it'll flatline. So they're saying the recession is going to be deeper and it's going to take longer to get out. All right. Now, the IMF also tells us that the UK economy is the only G7 economy not to have bounced back um, a, on opening up from the pandemic. The other G7 economies have grown. The UK's economy has shrunk. And that's backed up by figures shown by the Office of National Statistics, which tells us that not just of exports to the EU fallen, exports to the rest of the world are also down and in decline. Okay, now, the UK economy's focus is in contraction, and the IMF says it's gone faster than what they, they expected it to be. Now, we also know that inward investment in the UK is down 11% since the UK fully left the EU and the GDP has already dropped by 5.5%. So not looking good, the IMF and the OECD have a revised the outlook for the UK in 2023 and the economy is in contraction. In the full report they say they expect unemployment to rise and things like that as well and it's broken down but you can Use your search engine to get the IMF support. You can just take your idea here. You know how to use a search engine. Just look for the IMF's um, economic, economic outlook for the UK 2023. <coughs> <coughs> okay. <coughs> so, not good, folks. Right, moving on. Monday, and more Tory party sleaze, so the investigation into Dominic Rabs billing. Accusations started taking evidence from senior civil servants. Could the Deputy uh, Prime Minister's head be about to roll? That's all Sunak needs right now, eh? Mental. That could be the thing that strikes him. 
Right, also Monday, Bojo the Coin makes a bid to get back into the Westminster Criminal Cabal's cabinet by throwing his hat into the ring to replace uh, a Z <laughs> Zawawi as Tory party chair. So Bojo's throwing his hat in the ring to become an ex-Tory party chair in the hope that he will get a promoted to minister without portfolio and rest of his next government. Don't see that happening to any use. Moving on Monday, and firefighters UK wide vote to go on strike over paying conditions. Now, 80% of members uh, uh, of the Firemen's Union UK wide, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and England, 80% of them have voted to take strike action. Pressure mounts on this government through strike action. Now, um, all it would take is for these youth trade unions to start coordinating and to have a general strike to bring this bloody corrupt cabal down. And on the bright side, it's looking that way with a tomorrow's induction egg, industrial action involving a hundred thousand civil servants at a long time. Right, moving on, Monday back here in Scotland. And a Constitution Minister, Angus Robertson, tells us that a vote for independence is a vote to rejoin the EU. Also, Monday, cross party, cross the um, countries, grouping within the EU Parliament. Um, Progressive Alliance, I think it was, who have just they, um, elected the new leader in the European Parliament, says that they backed, uh, David backed Scotland's uh, um, application to rejoin the EU. Okay, so that's the stories I picked two for yesterday um, to, to discuss. Um, there was a lot of men out there, but I thought they were the main ones. Um, as far as Ukraine goes yesterday, apparently um, Kazan took a right pelt um, yesterday. Um, but the Russians are being repelled. And if, the other thing I'm hearing is that Putin's got a recruitment problem in Russia. They don't want to fight. All right, so let's have a wee look and see what the rags have got to say this morning, shall we? Um, where are we? Right, Scotland's paper, Magic Circle Scandal and Firefighters Vote to Strike. And he was this. Um, lawyers knew he was a beast but did nothing. Um, the Daily Record's front page features victims of so-called magic circle scandal. Mark Redwood Thompson uh, waves his right to um, anonymity to tell the papers about the abuse he suffered as a child from lawyer John Watts. Don't know anything about the story, unfortunately. The Herald has firefighters vote to strike for first time in 20 years over pay. The Scotsman has firefighters vote to strike for first time in 20 years over pay. Um, the Times has SNP readies army after firefighters strike vote. SNP Disney ready army. That will be happening right across the UK. But even if the SNP government was to ask for use of uh, the army and their firefighting equipment, well, last time I looked, we're all still part of this Canis Union, and we all still pay tax. The National has conspiracy of silence on damage to Scotland. Robertson takes aim at Labour as well as the Tories. While the impact of leaving EU will continue to be felt regardless of which party, which party is in power in Westminster, and that happens to be the truth. It doesn't matter which of the parties are going to be in power in Westminster. There is no growing this economy, and the damage will continue to be done. Supply chains in the EU, we've spoken about this before, have already realigned and the chances of uh, the 2025 negotiations to look at the deal we have with the EU right now are slim to bugger all. Slim to nothing. Nuts. The Express has Sturgeon is making up rules on the hoof. What? What? 
rules is she making up in the hoof? Apparently she gave a toe curling in interview about transgender. Never seen that. Eh? Don't know what it's all about. The Telegraph is economy to shrink after tax rate says I am tax rate says IMF. And the the Metro has no time to lie, and that's about Kremlin denies Boris Johnson's claim of death threat. But when he ragged the fuel has, now one in four can't get in to see their GPs. I think we're going to have to look into GP services here, folks. All the testimony I've got on GP services has all been positive. Right, what's the star go today if I can go the star? Where is it? And the Daily Star of Scotland has people cutting back on bog roll during cost of living crisis. We've really hit the skids as the headline. <laughs> <coughs> Ah, there's a star just to cheer us up on a Tuesday. Oh, we doggy. That's what I've got you for you today, folks. I hope you found that interesting. I hope you found it informative. I'd like to thank everybody that's given us a super chat. Remember, support the independent media support broadcast in Scotland, Independence Live, and the live radio, um, Caledon Media, Truth Radio, the iSport Magazine, the National Newspaper, Independent Bloggers and Bloggers. And if we got a crowdfunder going for any reason, whether it be for charity or because that's how they support themselves. If you've got a couple of quid and you can throw it in the pot to help us out. And a thanks very much. As you know, David and I have recently done only super chat so we can donate money to food banks. And with your help, hopefully we'll help to feed some more people in Scotland. Okay, doggy. Right. Um, now, eyes on the price, folks. Things are really starting to heat up again. But... This is a time when we want to talk about independence, but we don't actually want to be talking about <coughs> individual parties. We need to get back to how we campaigned in 2012 and 13, where we all spoke about the issues involved rather than having a pop at each other. So eyes on the prize. Get out there and win hearts and minds, all right? All the last couple of bits of guidance. Clean hands and surfaces regularly. If you're not feeling well, show some social conscience and mask up. All right. First one of the week out of the way. We'll be back tomorrow to do it all again. You guys, look after yourselves. Have a nice day.